This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. It's the day after the New Hampshire primaries, and there were certainly some interesting surprises this year. But before we go over the results, this just in. The Iowa Democratic Party has just issued an update to the press on the results from last week. It seems that they've decided to implement a new app called Muddle, and it re-canvassed the results. The winner of the 2020 Iowa Democratic caucuses is definitely Barack Obama, according to the Muddle app. In related news, Tom Perez is being treated for a self-inflicted concussion after facepalming and knocking himself out, and Troy Price is looking for a new job. Kidding aside, folks, New Hampshire does have some results, so it's time for some roasted opinions. There may have been some surprises in New Hampshire, but who won wasn't really one of them. In the GOP primary, Donald Trump cruised to an easy victory over Bill Weld. On the Democratic side, Bernie Sanders squeaked out a narrow victory over Pete Buttigieg. No, the surprises were down ticket. Sanders is from the neighboring state of Vermont, but Elizabeth Warren is likewise from a neighboring state, and she finished fourth. Joe Biden, the longtime frontrunner in the national polls, dropped to a dismal fifth place finish. Joe had more than double the number of votes over sixth place Tom Steyer, though, and vote tallies went down from there. Andrew Yang, Mike Bennett, and Deval Patrick finished so poorly that they have dropped out of the race. Tulsi Gabbard spent so much time in New Hampshire that she rented a house there, but only scratched out a seventh place finish, and it looks like she hasn't given up yet. Mike Bloomberg, the richest individual in the race, wasn't even on the ballot in New Hampshire as he concentrated his campaigning in Super Tuesday states. Bloomberg's hoping for an upset, and New Hampshire isn't part of the calculus. But the biggest surprise of the night was Amy Klobuchar. She did pretty well in the debate right before the primary, and she converted that good performance into a solid third-place finish. That's a significant debate bounce, and like Pete, it's catapulted her into the running nationally. Pete and Amy, who are both Midwesterners, have outlasted politicians from the Pacific coast and shot past more well-known politicians from the Atlantic coast. Only Bernie has really held his own against younger candidates from flyover countries so far. Liz and Joe are finding the rope a little more slippery than they had hoped, although both have won some delegates. Joe definitely knows what's going on. Twice now, he's bolted for the next state before the official results were in. I expect to hear his announced retirement any day now, and I'm not the only one. But roast, you say? Amy Klobuchar is in between Elizabeth Warren and Joseph Biden in the delegate count. How can you say that they aren't holding their own against her? Easy. Before this election cycle started, could any of you pronounce the names Buttigieg and Klobuchar properly? Me neither, because Pete was the mayor of South Bend, Indiana, and Amy was the other senator from Minnesota when Al Franken was busy destroying his political career. Americans didn't know either of them yet, and that is a big part of why they are surging, in my opinion. As Democratic voters get to know Mayor Pete and Senator Amy, they like what they see. The East Coast education is there, yes, but not at the cost of being able to talk to blue-collar workers. Nevada will be here before we know it. Let's see what happens there. <laughs> 